Good afternoon. It's Chris Bacon, the brain injured guy. Um, it is now Sunday, June the 12th at about quarter after two in the afternoon. Beautiful sunny day here in Kitchener, Ontario, Canada. Um, hardly a cloud in the sky. Anyway, I um, thought I'd give a little bit of an update uh, as to what's been going on. So, I uh, had a confirmation hearing in April. I believe it was April. Uh, dates from the previous date. Anyway, uh, went to the hearing. Judge, it's the first one Judge Hearn hasn't sat on for a while, like since we started this. I think Judge Hearn has sat on every single one since we got to pretrial hearing, judicial pretrial, um, which is unusual. Because, again, and this is questionable, same prosecutor, same judge, same obstruction to me. Because, again, I'm the one who doesn't want my story written down. I'm just there to waste everybody's time. And, uh, you know, the judge, instead of addressing any of my issues, went ahead and scheduled, the, even without a lawyer, I explained, uh, he may be my own lawyer, I was asking for assistance to get the information that I would need to assist the court, which is also a matter of accessibility. Uh, legal aid is supposed to have a person in place to uh, make sure that the uh, uh, laws as, as far as accessibility are complied with and also rolled out. Um, if you want more information on that, actually I've done some research and I'm going to put that information on the internet eventually too, the same way as I did the other uh, documents. Um, Basically, this has been going on since 2001, or no, no, actually before 2001, 90s or something like that, um, where um, what they, actually the new system is rolled out, they invented in Canada, uh, it's HRDC, Human Rights Development Canada, who is responsible in conjunction with the government of Canada for implementing all international treaties and laws with regard to, uh, and, and probably domestic too, I would assume, uh, as far as making sure that people are aware of what's supposed to be done, uh, enforcement, like teaching education of that, instruction, education, reinforcement, and enforcement. But they're forgetting the enforcement part. Anyway, uh, they together formed a committee, and then they, which went into the Office of Disability Integration, I think it's called, ODI. So do some research on the internet. I'm going to give you some more information on this later. Probably not on this tape, but uh, a little bit later because this one's going to be long enough. Um, anyway, so in, in this climate, I'm supposed to be getting all this help, but I'm standing in my own way, right? Okay, that's their story. Okay, here's my story. Same as always. They are acting as a protection racket. They are the ones who have to face the facts that I have to present. And they are the ones who don't want a written record of this, just like Walkerton, because if it's written down, then it's real. They have to deal with it. If they And this, this explains why they put me in this environment of mental health court, when again, like I said, it was all an act. They, they got me arrested. Again, that was not right, and all that is exactly as I explained, but they saw it as an opportunity. Somebody saw it as an opportunity. They had me in their pocket. Not only that, I was originally charged with threatening, which went away. But um, anyway, and I don't know why I was charged with threatening. Uh, because anyway, uh, um, sorry, I'm having a little bit of trouble today too. Uh, again, as you can see, um, trying to keep it straight. So uh, they made me go back to the courthouse. I went there and uh, didn't have a lawyer. It was the first time a new judge was on the case, okay? Same prosecutor. Um, I ended up going there and, uh, uh, right, I was going up without a lawyer originally. I was asking for help again because when, when I talked to her and I, I, I explained what I needed to have happen, I needed to go up. I wasn't able to, they have a restriction on my surety that I'm not allowed to attend the courthouse unless I have a, a, a court case, like an appearance that day. So he put me as my own lawyer with that, and I asked him to remove that restriction 
because I had to see, like, uh, I, uh, first of all, I have to see where I got to go file. I mean, even to file something, I wasn't able to file anything because I'm restricted from coming to the courtroom or courthouse uh, unnecessarily. And why make me my own lawyer? Again, Mr. Gale and I weren't really at odds. I was just asking for an explanation. The judge saw it as a means, in my belief, the judge saw it as a means to pressure me. Because that's what this is about. It's a bully pulpit. You know, that's what it's been for 12 years. Anyway, so I go to this court case and I don't have a lawyer. I'm asking for a lawyer. I saw Hal Matson. Hal Matson is a well-known lawyer in the area as a defense attorney. So I got, and I had seen him be around before, said hi and stuff like that. But I actually stopped him this time and asked him if he'd be available. And unfortunately, he asked me what date. And I told him the date. And he said, no, I'm going to be on vacation. Can you move the date? And I'm going, well, I don't know why you wouldn't be able to move the date. But he's not sure, so whatever. Um, and I believe, yeah, actually, uh, Mr. Oh, right, yeah, he did. He did appear for me that day. Uh, Mr. Matson, and he had instructed the court that what he did was he had referred me to another new lawyer called Mr. Andrew Bond. And uh, I've been very clear about what my issues are that I need I need to record and stuff like that. And at, and at the initial uh, meeting at the courthouse for a few minutes, Mr. Bond was told about all that and it was understood that there wasn't going to be a problem. So uh, Matson appeared on my behalf, uh, informed the court that I had been uh, introduced to Mr. Bond, and I had a chance to uh, talk to him, that, that Matson would like to take it, and he tried to get the court date changed first, but the Crown Attorney's dead against it. No, can't get it changed. Um, so, Bond is in. So they set it off for about a week, or a week or ten days, I can't remember, same judge, to come back. Or maybe that was her and then. Actually, no, I think it was, no, it was Hearn for the confirmation hearing. Sorry, yeah, it was Hearn for the confirmation hearing. And, uh, anyway, Mr. Bond was, was, uh, was agreed to look at the case and take the case. Um, I was given his business card contact information, and uh, we left. Uh, I had posted stuff on the internet, which I'm going to be revealing today. Uh, which I sent him a copy of to show him where it was at. And uh, instead of me having to explain everything again, I sent him a copy of uh, Abuse of Disabled... Oh, just a sec, let me see what's it called again. Um, I sent him links to Abuse of Disabled in Canada as a Privilege Preserved and Corrupt Legal System. Disabled Canadian requests UN Special... Um, Rapporteur to investigate violations of disability rights and Canadian government sanctioned abuse and exploitation disabled explained part one and part two. So that uh, actually I might not have sent them the uh, actually I've got the video I've got the email here and I'll be showing that later. But uh, anyway I emailed him the information and uh, he never contacted me. Uh, we tried to meet and we were supposed to uh, meet and we weren't able to. Um, and then when we finally put it off to meeting at the courthouse the day of the hearing. So I went earlier and tried to get a hold of him, but, you know, we were held up in that or whatever, uh, finding him. We finally found him at the courthouse, and uh, we, he, he went to go in the interview room with us. And I pulled out my recorder, and I went to press record, and he's, he says he can't record. And I said, excuse me? He says, no, you can't record. That's, I'm not comfortable with that. And I'm going, excuse me, it's for my disability. I need to remember what you're telling me. You know, which is, again, participating in my own life. And this is not supposed to be even be a discussion if you read those documents, especially for lawyers. What lawyers are required to do as well, okay? And even under UN Protocol Disability Rights. Go ahead and read them. They're there. Uh, uh, you know, um, what do they call it? OPS, uh, Ontario Public Service Handbook. It's all there. Um, anyway, uh, so apparently, so right away, then he, he was deliberate, he was agitated, he was nervous. It looked like to me like he was uh, trying to get out of the case. And he succeeded in doing so with the easiest way, which is saying he did not allow me to record. So when we went back in the courtroom, Mr. Matson was with us as well because, or no, he wasn't. No, actually, I went in the court and I had fired. I said, you're not even hired then. If I got to have this discussion with you after all this, then you're not even on the job. 
So I went into that courtroom and I said, no, I'm, this is abuse. Like, why is it I have to come in this courtroom and explain to everybody what their duty under law is as far as accommodation? It's plain and simple abuse. And I complained about that. The judge didn't say anything. He got up and he walked out to take a break, to allow me to calm down. So I was allowed to go outside into the uh, foyer and I met up with Mr. Matson again and explained what happened. And he's, he's going, well, let's see if we can change the date. Because the only problem he had was that he wouldn't be able to do the date because he was going to be on vacation, which had been planned for a long time, and he was not available. So he came in and he explained to the judge that, yeah, uh, okay, there's a problem with Mr. Bond, but he struck up a rapport with me and uh, seems to have struck up a rapport with me, and he, and, he, and he believes that he can speak to me about the case and uh, blah, blah, blah. And so uh, and I, I agreed that we would be able to discuss the case. And again, I've made it clear to the court that this thing about my disability and accessibility is, is abuse. Mr. Matson was actually, it's interesting because Mr. Matson's assistant was the first time anybody even came close to what is required by a lawyer when dealing with a disabled person. Mr. Matson instructed her to come and talk to me to try and define exactly what my disability was. Okay, what would need to be accommodation? And we sat down, we had that conversation. Okay. So Matson told the court the only thing that needed to be done was to change the date and he would be able to do it. And the Crown was dead against it. They're trying to go, no, we need the same date. You know, probably because what, Judge Hearn was going to be on it again? Or they had their fix in? It's going to be a different prosecutor from what I understand. But again, they're not, they're, they're, they're not saying anything about the tapes. And I got a little surprise for them on that one if we go anywhere. Um, I don't think we're going to be presenting. But I'll get to that at the end. Um, anyway, because uh, the obstruction is complete. Anyway, uh, so far. <clears throat> so, uh, the, the, or the Crown Attorney was being real belligerent. First of all, but the judge sat there and he said, well, are you the one who's going to be sitting on the case? And she said, no, it's going to be some other prosecutor. And he says, well, you might want to get a hold of her because you really think she wants to appear there with Mr. Bacon having no representation? It's the first time that a judge even raised that issue, other than to warn me that I should just take the cookie cutter and get this over with, or perform what they call victim offender uh, information program, VOIP, where I guess we were going to get together and have a little meeting, go, oh, I'm sorry to him, and then he was going to go, well, that's okay, and then, then they were going to let everybody go. Oh, Mr. Uh, Gail was very, oh yeah, well, this could just go away, you know, and that's how they do it, right? Record or no record, but uh, I'm, you know, how do I go on with my life? If they put me back out there without the police answering for what they did, without me having any health care, without me having any safety, without me, like I said, this is why I'm at the point right now where I have actually gotten the form from uh, Citizenship Immigration Canada and I'm filling it out, which is the form to renounce my Canadian citizenship under subsection 9, uh, parentheses 1, and parentheses. And I've informed legal aid that I am asking for a legal aid certificate to cover a lawyer for uh, citizenship immigration. I think they call it citizenship immigration and refugees or something. Uh, immigration, refugees, and citizenship Canada. Okay, and the form is C as in Charlie, I as in Italy, T as in Terence, 0302, parentheses, 04 hyphen, 2016, and parentheses E. They have a French version available as well, which is CIT 0302F. Okay, but that is an application to renounce Canadian citizenship under subsection 91. Doesn't show really well, but I guess I'll show it later with my documents. Oh, there you go. Oh, it's probably backwards. Ha! <laughs> anyway, forgot about that. <clears throat> so now we've got it. Uh, so uh, again, I guess the Crown had to capitulate. So it was put on record that Mr. Matson would be my lawyer, even though we hadn't even discussed anything yet. 
even though I hadn't, we done nothing to deter to establish a lawyer client relationship with such as discuss fees uh and sign a retainer or whatever it's called uh there's a you know they are required to sit down with you and discuss all the fees up front whether you're legal aid or not uh go to the you know go seek information it tells you what they're required to do under law um anyway uh, none of that was established uh the date was set to june 28th so my next horse and pony show there is june 28th at 9 30 in the morning or 10 in the morning whatever um yeah, it's 10 in the morning, sorry. Courtroom number 105, 85 Frederick Street in Kitchener, Ontario. It's corner Duke Street. You're going to have to check out, you know, you want to come early because parking, I'm not sure how that works there. Um, but it's a mess with all the construction and everything down there. You can uh, visit our beautiful city of Kitchener, home of the Kitchener Blues Fest, October Fest, many other fests because we're just a festive town. No, actually, uh, we've got a lot going on. Culture, arts, uh, Kitchener is a beautiful place. It's just got a really bad underbelly, you know, disgusting tract that we have to excise from the uh, community. Anyway, uh, so June 28th, courtroom 105, 930. Uh, Mr. Matson went on his vacation. He gave me his information. He says, well, call me around the 16th. I'll be back. And give, give me a call around the 16th, which was a Monday, 16th of June. Or no, of May, sorry, of May. So, which I did. I think it was a day or two later because I was caught up in stuff too. Um, but uh, I called him. He said around the 16th. So, I think it was the 17th or 18th I called him because of what was going on with us. Um, and I left a message. And uh, asking him to, or whatever. I, I'll play it. I mean, I've got it. I can play it. Um, it won't be today though. But I left a message asking him to get a hold of me. Uh, and I asked him a question, especially, I, I gave him direction. I sat there and I said, well, number one, uh, you got to get those tapes from the hospital and like for the whole detention. So definitely from that, because the only ones that the police control supposedly is uh, courthouse tapes and the Waterloo Regional Police Station. Now, when I was given my file, um they mysteriously had the printout you see when you get a disc of video evidence they they give you the actual disc and then they also give you a photocopy of the affidavit that shows that that disc was part of the uh materials that were handed over so there was supposed to be two discs we only had the one and i don't worry i i, I videotaped it opening up the package so everything that came in it is documented and everything that went back with it is documented um Anyway, uh, it showed that there was supposed to be a second video there, the one of me in the base, like in the holding cells at the Waterloo Regional Police Station, which was mysteriously missing. Now, again, I'm not accusing Mr. Gale of anything. He probably just misplaced it. Uh, I did uh, try and get a hold of him, try and get get a copy of that and get it back to no avail. Um, I informed Mr. Matson when I handed him the file on uh, the date that I went back, and that was the second time when he finally took the case or what looked at he didn't take the case he was taking the evidence to look at it we hadn't agreed on it yet um by reputation i was hopeful by experience i was wrong uh because the way it's turned out anyway so mr matson is supposed to be representing me uh so he, he gets me to call him I, I told him well you need that and also mainly you need to have the and we need to subpoena the manager of the Waterloo Region or Wellington Court Services to ask her a question. And the only question I wanted to ask her is this, uh, based on the fact that Wellington Detention Center had a permission slip for KW or Grand River Hospital, whatever they want to call themselves, in order to ask me for, for me to have medical attention, they were requiring me to fill out a form for Grand River Hospital at Maplehurst Detention Center. Now, Grand, Hospi Grand River Hospital is in Waterloo County. Maplehurst is in Wellington County. There is only one way that that document that quickly got into Maplehurst and was put forward to a disabled person who has memory problems, PTSD, kept under 24-7 sleep deprivation since the time I had been put in there. And this was the day before I appeared before court and saw my lawyer because I hadn't seen a lawyer till this point either. 
which is illegal under any conditions, let alone the fact that they gave me into the jaws of the snake where, again, from a legal standpoint, I had established there was a do not touch order there since 05 or 06. The patient relations when she came down, and this is a legal advisor for the hospital to let them know when they've crossed a line, acknowledge that there were, they had not touched me and there was a do not touch order. It appeared there was a do not touch order in a place since 05, 06. Based solely on the fact of they had harmed me and they refused to work with me to do anything about it and they were covering it up. And the biggest problem, which is why this does not work for the patient, they did whatever dance they did to make it look like there was no error, but in the patient record, they do nothing to change it to reflect anything changed for the patient. They do nothing to allow treatment. The biggest problem with KW or Grand River Hospital, whatever they want to call themselves, is number one, they're allowing other people to interfere with my informed consent. They were interfering with my informed consent. They refused me treatment, proper treatment. They made mistakes. They did not give me a neck brace on the initial day of the operation, of the, of the uh, accident. I never got a back, I mean, a, a neck brace. So the, the accident was June 21st, 2004. I didn't get a proper neck brace until February of 2005. And when I walked in my family physician's office, because I had a family physician, Dr. John Pope of New Vision Family Health Network. They even, they were one of the first family health networks. They had George Smitherman coming doing press conferences in their waiting room, which is why they shuffled me to the back room for half an hour, because they didn't want somebody in the waiting room going and saying, I'm not hurt at work, or whatever their gig was. But there certainly is a lot of complicity here. But So I had a doctor who once the truth was being revealed, was allowed to drop me mid-treatment. Is that not harmful to the patient? Again, health minister, federal and provincial, Ontario Medical Association, Ontario Hospital Association, College of Physicians and Surgeons. Do you have any comment on that? Probably not. It's all complicity. Anyway, where am I? Okay, so, Mr... Uh, Matson asked me to call him and I called him back and I gave him instructions and all of a sudden he just called me back he left a message okay call me so I, I called him and I got him on the phone and we're talking and and he's just ignoring like in in the message or uh, no actually we talked I think we talked first and he was being like non-cooperative I got the cop I got the tape um, and I sat there and I said, no, actually, I, oh, wait a minute. No, I think what it was is he left a message where he just, uh, okay, da, 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 and he was being nonchalant and he was ignoring it. So I sat there and, uh, I should have to check the, the thing, but anyway, it happened that he sabotaged the case too. He sabotaged his ability to do this. Like he's saying right now, because the, the other thing the court has a rule of the rule, the court of uh, mental health court has established a couple of rules. Number one. You're appointed a lawyer and you're not allowed to change them. Okay. Number two, the Crown Attorney decides what is evidence, especially when it comes to public cameras and whatever else. And whatever happens, the, the my lawyer and the judge goes along with it, or has been, because it's Judge Hearn. It's the same judge, same judge, same Crown Attorney. For the moment, well, same Crown Attorney's office, because that's the Crown Attorney's office that did this to me and is doing this to me. Crown Attorney's office of Ontario, because I'm a pest, because I refuse to let this issue of them running. They allowed Labor Board and WSIB to run as a racket. It is nothing more than a protection racket, because their duty under law is to keep workers safe, uh, keep legitimately working employers in business and eliminate the ones that are the problems. The law is already set up for it because again, 
uh, Occupational Health and Safety Act comes first. Buys the crown and everybody. And do yourself a favor. Go look at it. It's not that hard, and it's not that. It's mostly about what they're required to do in the case of an accident. And and again, labor board, you need to check it against their accident report because they're not allowed to go incomplete and go not applicable when it comes to reasons why that accident happened. It's a public record. Any of you out there in the public can go and look. It's Kitchener Pallet Services, P A L L E T Services on Maple Avenue or Maple Street in Kitchener. And you, they started in 1999, actually over by the Schneider's plant here in Kitchener on Borden Ave. They still operated, or they still operated a factory there. They were also uh, Borden Cold Storage, all owned by the same owners, all advised by lawyers, all under the tutelage of the labor board. When there was an accident, the labor board again would go and investigate, supposedly investigate under occupational health and safety. And under occupational health and safety, you're required to have a worker safety rep. Not Workplace Safety Insurance Act. But it's that's, you see, Workplace Slavery and Interference Board, what they do is they say, well, there's this act here called Occupational Health and Safety Act that you're required to be in line with. And there's you're not allowed to go, well, we'll give you a chance after chance after chance. What is What does it mean to be in good faith? Anyway, <clears throat> I don't want to make this too long. This is hard. Um, so it's basically I'm going into court now. Uh, I fired Mr. Matz, and he refuses to contact me. He refuses it because he refused to contact, like talk about the case the way that it's supposed to be talked about. He did not take any information from me. He's trying to ram this cookie cutter bullshit down my throat again, and that's all I get. So I fired him. He never, well, I didn't fire him. He never represented me in the first place. We didn't even get a chance to discuss any of that stuff. Okay? And, and having this happen twice in a row, it seems to me that it's just a demonstration for the court that I'm the problem. They're trying to say to the court that I'm the one who's obstructing myself from getting my story written down because I really don't want it to come out. I'm just interfering with the court, and I'm mental. Which is not what it is. They just refuse to do their duty under law. I am not properly represented. They were, I mean, I can't even get them to get the films from the hospital. The, the film and audio from Maplehurst. And it's all there. They will not discuss anything of the case with me. Because, again, if they are told something like that, they're required to do something about it. But I don't see how they get past the dichotomy of, I'm going after your damn licenses anyway. And... Where's Osgood Hall? Where is the universities who teach law? This has been part of the law since 2004, ratified in 2010, yet none of these lawyers know what they're required to do because none of them, nobody's ever made them. Well, it's time we make them. This costs a lot of money. And how much cookie cutter law has been going on out there, especially for people who are trusting, who are mentally uh, or or disabled in other ways who are getting advice from all these people that are supposedly helping them when all they're doing is smoothing over the fact that there's never ever going to be any evidence of wrongdoing from the medical community or legal community ever entered into evidence as a, in a court of law because that is the Crown's job as well. But what this amounts to is the Crown Attorney in Ontario, because of them covering up for this company and WSIB and, work, and Labor Board, not enacting their duty under law in the first place, which is the sole purpose of the Attorney General Justice Minister, provincially and federally, enforce the law and uphold it and make sure it's upheld, okay? So they had a choice. In 2004, Westray Bill came into effect on March 31st, 2004. Westray Bill was from the Westray coal mine disaster where again, same thing. People, workers were saying there were problems there. They had labor board report after labor board report. They were given a pass every time. When is an employer not acting in good faith? When is an employer who's fully advised by a lawyer and the people who are supposed to be managing that uh, workplace to make sure that the, it is, like, we are, I was told I was going to have a work safe place. Everybody is. Is this constitute 
the ability to provide a work safe place? No. It was, in, it was a breeding ground of permissiveness to allow under 20 employees to continue to exist and work for five years, doubling their accident rate. And, and had I not raised the issue, they'd still be doing it. But because of allowing that to happen, and this is not the only one, and they're hiding true, my opinion is they're hiding true, and my observations there, based on what I saw for the uh, uh, stats that were maintained for the same time period, is that they are obviously not reporting properly the amount of accidents that are happening there. And I believe they're hiding it through temporary services, Liberty Staffing Services. And we need to find out exactly how are these accidents being reported if a, if a temporary service is involved. Which company has taken on that, that hit? Is that the temporary service or is it the company or is it both? You know, these are questions we need to answer because this factory was allowed to operate for five years before my accident. 99 to 2004. Yeah, that's five years, right? Without a worker safety rep in place, doubling their accident rate, so none of them did their duty under law, none of them were acting in good faith, including labor board and workplace slavery and interference board. But gee, why would they act that way? Because it was about, it's about exploiting the system. It's about playing both sides of the fence because I don't know if that's where they're doing everywhere else. I'm talking about here. The inferences and the history shows that that's what they do. I think this proves it. But the fact of the matter is the Ontario, and I've been trying to raise this in every venue that I'm able to. And because I refuse to let this go, the Attorney General and the Government of Ontario under the Liberals targeted me. I am not able to get any representation and it's exactly the same tactics. In tribunal, I, went, I was made to appear in a social benefits tribunal because of another fraud that they're playing on people. And the biggest fraud again too, is I've got that whole interaction. Jamie Hildebrand from, uh, was my legal aid representative from the community legal clinic in uh, Stratford, which also shared responsibilities of the office in Godrich. And he supposedly oversaw this uh, hearing. And again, same obstructive tactics, same ability to use my disability against me. I had problems remembering even more back then. And all we did was meet to say, hey, you're going to take a look at this. Oh, yeah, what do you need in the case? And I showed him that I told him the case. And I brought my receipts to say, here, I keep every receipt. And he was just supposed to get the file. And he got the file. And I kept calling up, going, do you get file yet? No. Filing yet? No. Almost two years. Then it finally, I guess, I got a new girl because she went, oh, yeah, it's sitting right here. It's been here for almost two years. And that's when I said, well, why is he, why didn't he call me? Oh, well, he was looking through it. I had to find something. Really? Without my advice. And I already, anyway, the point is, then, then I finally forced him to have this hearing. He did nothing for me. I brought my receipts to prove that, because it was a claim of an overpayment by me. Okay, I, I had to temporarily go on assistance when, and it was top-up assistance, so I was working. But it was to subsidize my income when I won custody of my two daughters. Okay? And it was only a short period of time. <coughs> anyway, um, who's in track of where I am again? Uh, I'm having a bit of a pain crisis again here. Um, and I can't go back and watch it. And then Uh, where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Uh, okay, Western Bill. Uh, um, anyway, um, I'm gonna have to just start where I am, which is uh, they are using it as a protection racket. They're exploiting it. So they play the employ the uh, accident employer on one side. They're playing every legitimately operating employer everywhere else because this is fraud. Plain and simple, any of you employers out there, did your rates, your rates went up in 2004, I know that, if you had no lost time injuries. If you were doing everything you required to, you want to find out why your rates kept going up every few years, because they cultivate these places. 
they keep having accidents, they don't correct the situation, and that added to, and again, whether deliberate by error or omission doesn't matter. The fact that it happened and it existed does. And what's even more damning is how the Attorney General, Labor Board, WSIA, or WSIB, and everybody else has decided to take this. They victimized me instead because they thought I wouldn't be able to prove anything. A year and seven months after the fact, MRI spec was finally done, the proper test. Proved unequivocally I have a brain injury from this accident, period. Of course, WSIB, under their, uh, they, they've got it written down as PTSD with headaches because they just dismissed that. They also uh, prevented me from going to my NEL, which is non-economic loss meeting which is the only time you get all their information with all my information and the doctors actually examine you and then give you the bottom line. And they prevented me from going there. They just wrote me a letter. It was all set up and everything. I was prepared to go and all of a sudden they sent me a letter saying that's been canceled and here we're get, we decided this is your decision and there's your check. No tribunal. They blocked me from tribunal the whole time because, again, it's the same thing they're doing here. If I was to get in there and tell the truth, like able to tell the truth, and this is why I'm going to the... See, this is where I'm going. None of them are acting in good faith. We discovered that. So that brings it out of the WSIA into the criminal code, especially with the Westray Bill. Because the Westray Bill came into effect March 31st, 2004. My accident was June 21st, 2004, which means that all these parties had one choice and one choice only and they made the wrong choice they decided instead of upholding the law doing their duty under law with the threat of the west trade bill being above their heads that anyone directing how uh, anybody works acts irresponsibly or criminally negligent they can be charged criminally now including the queen her majesty the queen can be dragged off this throne metaphorically of course uh, and brought over here and charged for that crime. Just like occupational health and safety binds the crown. That is a legal term, which means that the crown attorney has no choice. Justice minister and, and attorney generals, did you get that? And I challenge you, come out here and prove me wrong. Instead, what the Attorney General did was, well, I'm just one person. I'm brain injured. I've been stripped of my family position because basically everything fell away. I was stripped of everything. First, my family position, who's supposed to advocate for me, did nothing except for drop me once the evidence started coming out that I was actually hurt. And again, he didn't, where's the explanation of where was he? I was seeing him on a regular basis. It's always hurry up and wait, just like we all get now, right? Because that's healthcare now. Hurry up and wait. Oh, you healed a little bit too much, and so now cost outweighs benefit. So now we don't have to give you treatment. Really. I haven't gotten treatment. The only treatment I got since this happened was a little bit of physiotherapy and uh, um, yeah. Oh, and pain management for a few years until they deliberately, uh, anyway, I'm not going to go through every detail. <clears throat> Point of the matter is here. So Mr. Batson is not representing me. He is not, he, I've asked him to return the, I told him to make a recusation to recuse himself as a lawyer turn over the file immediately and also make sure that that second desk from the police station is is there because I need the information in order to defend myself. And he's refusing to contact me in any way, shape or form. I even instructed legal aid about this and nothing. So my assumption is I, we're going to show up at court there and it's going to be ready to go and Mr. Matson's going to be ready to do his cookie cutter and the court's going to be ready to go because they got all this stuff in place and they've obstructed and there's not a word written down in my defense. There's not one piece of evidence, including the evidence that they were supposed to use against me 
to be able to demonstrate what I'm talking about. And, you know, it's all because we haven't even got past the first gate, which is uh, accessibility. The ability to have my story written down for me. And the truth told. But veritas, or the truth, around that courthouse is much like uttering the word Voldemort in Harry Potter's world. It's the word that's never spoken. Lest the world come crumbling down and bad things happen. You know. Voldemort, Voldemort, Voldemort. You know. I should go in that courtroom and the first thing I should say is Voldemort. You know. But uh, no, that's the truth. Like they, they're they there to uh, engineer the truth. To put on a horse and pony show. So, but I'm not playing that. I've instructed the uh, legal aid that Mr. Matson is not my lawyer. I'm forbidden from going to the courthouse, so there's no way for me to even do anything about this till the trial. Um, because I can't go there until I'm called to go there. It's a restriction on my bond, on my release, uh, even though I was supposed to be able to go. Like, and again, how do I defend myself as my own lawyer? This is all questions that need to be answered. So the government decided to, to get into the racketeering business because that's what this amounts to. It's a protection racket against all the employers that are working properly. Actually, let's just say against all the law-abiding people of Ontario. Because lost time injuries goes to actuarials, which affects the cost of everything. Lost time injuries, gross domestic product, uh, everything. Mortgages, the amount of interest you're paying, the dollar, cost of the dollar, price of oil, that is all actuarials. Anyway. So instead they do a protection racket, which I think is clearly shown because here we are, I'm in, I'm in the final venue because you know what, the gov Ontario government, I went to every tribunal, they did exactly the same thing and I had legitimate uh, causes. Again, same thing because it's about me pressing play. There's no, there's no, there's no, there's no uh, it is, it captures a moment of history in real time as it's happening in a context of a court what that does is it provides the ability that the only way this is used as evidence is you review the evidence you transcribe it you call the person in as a witness based on what happened that on this date at that time this happened right and you ask them questions did this happen did that happen and they go and they give their answers and then you're allowed to go back to the tape to impeach them if they lie in any way, shape, or form or are mistaken. Well, may I play this tape? I mean, what was it? Uh, murderer thing on TV. You saw how they use it in court there. But they can't do that for me, right? You know, that's why they, they can't do it. If you bring a landlord in, legal aid. Legal aid did this to us on three occasions. Sorry, excuse me. Legal Aid did this. Oh, I'm sorry. Legal Aid did this to us on at least three occasions. Um, deliberately. And the last time was for a landlord tenant board hearing. Had nothing to do with WSIB or OHIP. Oh, yeah. And yet, for some reason, both W I'm restricted from attending WSIB offices or OHIP oh, offices or the courthouse. Is my surety. That's the only restrictions I have, other than I'm to keep the beast and be of good behavior. That's the only restrictions. Anyway, um, so legal aid has been doing, the, the whole system has been doing this. And I've been targeted because I won't sit down and shut up. And they're making an example of me. And that's why they deliberately, systemically stripped me of, well, again, a deliberate error or mission doesn't matter. I have been stripped of my rights. I have no health care, even to the point where doctors want to give me health care, realize it's a legal situation and have to run away and I don't blame them 
But the point of the matter is, if we're talking patient safety here, how do I get proper health care and how do you justify the dollars being spent? Because the one consistent thing about this, I go see medical people about harm. They prevent, they sit there and write reports saying harm. Not one of them would do anything about it. I never had any police ever called. I've never had any kind of, there's no mechanism to go and deal with this on any level because the whole system is deny, deflect, obstruct, victimize, then criminalize. Especially with the lies part. Okay? So I fully expect June 28th, nine, or 10 o'clock in the morning, courtroom number 585 Frederick Street, that this is going to be a travesty because I'm shutting it down. I have not been represented. I have not had anything to uh, to be written down for me or collected on my behalf. Uh, we were not allowed to go. I mean, there's no lawyer who's bringing me to the appeals level so we can ask these questions before. I mean, it's like, okay, we're going to put the Jews in the oven and then just go ahead and get in the oven. We'll be back in three months to do something about it. Sorry to use that reference, it's kind of, but I mean, I keep being brought back to 1935 Germany when everybody was saying there's a problem then and they're all going, no, there's not. I don't see anything. I was standing on the street corner. I see how you people walk by and you don't even, you, you don't want to know because you got enough trouble, right? It's not your fault. Anyway, that's how they want everybody. Canada. Oh, Canada. Or you could be Canadian and get out there and educate yourself about exactly what kind of fascist government we have running this show. And you, this should, I, I mean, that's my opinion, but this should seriously raise some serious questions as to what's going on. So anyway, uh, the, the Attorney General decided that they are going to back, they're going to continue to do their racketeering practice instead of upholding the law. And that is the sole purpose why they decided they were going to... And, and again, I don't think it was deliberate in the fact that they obviously... They didn't know I was coming that day. Because uh, I was kind of just checking back. So, but they, the opportunity arose. The officer presented an opportunity for them. He had already crossed the line. And if, if that had been compounded to, to, to what I was saying... So if what I said actually happened, this doesn't look good for them either. So what do they do? Some genius, and I'm going to prove this through the evidence... Some genius decided, let's use this as an opportunity. He's in a vulnerable position. They put me into the hospital where, and, and again, from a legal standpoint, anything that they would have to offer as evidence would be inadmissible if I chose it because conflict of interest. It's tainted. The whole thing's tainted. Right away, that when I went to... Uh, the, I was in the meeting, I mean, they, sorry, in the room being held, and they, 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 you know, I'm supposed to be out of my mind and stuff, but I asked for uh, patient relations, and they came, and we had a discussion, and I, I, we confirmed that I had a do not touch order in place at that hospital, so the media, immediately once that happened, they were required to do one thing and one thing only, take me to freaking St. Mary's. Of course, that, I didn't know at the time the boards are amalgamated, so technically St. Mary's can't touch me either which presents a unique situation. But uh, given the, at the moment's notice what they were required to do legally without tainting any evidence or, or damning any evidence being used against them or against me, and I'm not asking for it not to because I want it used against them because it's going to show what happened. But the minute that happens, they were required to send me to St. Mary's because anything a doctor says there is tainted. Right? So they sent me to St. Mary's. But... If they sent me to St. Mary's, I would have passed the 72-hour hold because I was oriented to person, place, or time, and, and I was not a harm to myself or others. Then they, and they tried to apply the pressure. They had my family there. Oh, I'm, I got my PTSD going off. I'm, I'm panicking because I'm in the hospital where they hurt me. Uh, you know, this is totally meant to use my disability to break me down and make me an emotional mess so I'll sit there and just go, oh, please help me. And then that would have negated the, the do not hold order and it would have made the, me their, their, their recipient and, and then they looked like the good guy or whatever the how their plan was. 
But it didn't work because, like I said, I told them no. I was asking for medical help because they had injured me. They had harmed me. I was bruised all over my wrists and everything. Matter of fact, I think they sprained my wrists. I have nerve damage, though, so I can't tell. You know, I, I could have had a broken wrist for all I know. I don't know. I got nerve damage. But they refused to do it, and this should be something in Canada. Immediately upon arrest, if you go to a, a police station or a hospital, they should be required to take pictures, just like they do in the States. And this is to protect officers from wrongful uh, accusation. Okay? Anyway... I'm getting off track here. Sorry, I'm in a bit of a pain crisis. Hang on a sec. Um, um, okay. So what I think this has now been elevated to because now this is federal ministers involved. And I'll show you how that comes down. It'll, it'll probably be in the next video. Um, not the evidence, because I think I'm going to break this up. I don't want to go much over an hour. Um, anyway, uh, what I believe they've raised, because the federal minister's involved with this, and I've, I've reached out, uh, again, accessibility to services and being heard. You're going to see what I've been trying to get, uh, who I've been trying to get a hold of and about this. And nobody's raised a word, ever. Uh, especially Trudeau, about, uh, I can't even get him in a boxing ring. He's chicken. Um, anyway, so what I believe this is now, because they've obstructed me here, this is a total fait accompli of taking my rights away as, as an individual, as a Canadian citizen. So as a result, um, I believe this has raised the bar because they're participating in racketeering and the government is protecting the wrongdoers on every level. So my claim is, and this is going to sound a little far-fetched, but thanks to them, uh, it was assented to on the 29th of June 2000. Uh, an act respecting genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes and to implement the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court and to make consequential amendments to other acts. Short title is, this act may be cited as the Crimes Against Humanity and War Crimes Act. And Attorney General, are you paying attention? Because you are backing your Attorney General Ontario and her actions, right? Or their actions. Premier Wynne and, his, and her actions. The Labour Board who is responsible and under Westray Bill, if there is any case that is a candidate for Westray Bill, this is is it how much more clear can i be than that and i want other canadians if you're paying attention and you're doing you're, you're checking it out and i invite you to do the research yourself the two companies were kitchener pallet services and borden cold storage they were owned by the same three owners all of which had legal um, or sorry, not three owners, all owned by the same owners. And they all had legal advice during the whole time. Plus they had the advice of the uh, Workplace Safety and Insurance Board. They had a customer service rep. They also had a worker service rep. All of which were hiding the facts and actually abusing the law. Matter of fact, the racketeering it goes to, I mean, how many people do I have to talk to about what, what's been going on at WSIB? They're interfering with informed consent. They're not properly storing patient records or utilizing them in a proper way. They are cherry picking them deliberately and not having them complete for deliberately because that's the only way their system works. They have a roster of doctors that do not uh, examine a patient ever and yet have power to sit there and say whether or not uh, you're, you get treatment. But this is in an environment where the rules state clearly in a situation where it's 50-50, onus goes on to the WSIB, which means the patient gets treated no matter what. The, or sorry, not just treatment, any decision that is 50-50 goes in favor of the injured worker. 
So with all this climate in there, gee, I'm just, I'm just really don't want to get any help. I really don't want to have any health care. I really don't want the treatment that's been identified for me. I really would rather have my body broken and, and spirit broken and, and PTSD added and go through all this hell. And, and every, time I, every time I happen to get in with an illegal landlord, which again, disability. Illegally operating landlord that's protected by the protection racket that the attorney general has going on with the tribunal system. They're not policing the social benefits system, obviously. And old age security is going on tribunal system soon, people. Or already is, isn't it? Wherever there's a tribunal going on, there's no law. They're circumventing the law. That's their cookie cutter world. But every, and I've got evidence of every, this is their modus operandi. This is how they make business. This is why they built a $900 million courthouse and spent $647 million on legal aid in Southern Ontario. Or maybe that is all of Ontario, who knows? But again, gee, would it be good for education? And would it help those departments if we uh, taught in schools, you know, life skills? Hey, how about, this? it's very simple what constitutes a legal workplace. You could teach that class in less than a day and reinforce it the rest of the year, you know. Uh, how about recognizing an illegal rental? Very simple. You don't think that would be helpful to the, to the many civilian uh, citizens, our community? You know, uh, it's like terrorists. Oh, you should t report a terrorist anytime, but illegal housing and and people mills are okay where's your dike i mean please explain this to us we're waiting anyway it's going to be explained to you because like i said they've raised the bar this is now crimes against humanity and genocide and i have also gone to the trouble of informing legal aid. I'm on legal aid, so I've asked for assistance of another lawyer. First of all, I told him that Mr. Matson is not representing me at any time. He will not be representing me. He, we never even established a, a client relationship. Um, he's refusing to return the file to me so I could represent myself. He's refusing to do anything. Um, so he's refusing me my rights. And he's refusing to uh, represent me and my case and it's a further stripping of my rights so i have uh, informed the attorney general and everybody that i and i mentioned in my tape that i would be resigning my citizenship as a citizen of canada and i have the application right here i've informed uh that, that's a uh, form number charlie uh Italy, uh, Terra, CIT, 0302, parentheses, 04-2016, end parentheses, E. It's also available as CIT 0302F for a French version. It's called Application to Renounce Canadian Citizenship under subsection 9, parentheses, 1, end parentheses. And I've already got it filled out. I've already informed the uh, attorney, I mean, the uh, legal aid that uh, I request under my disability because I am eligible. I've got a lawyer for this, don't I? So I'm asking that I have a lawyer to help represent me before the Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada because my complaint is obviously the citizenship isn't worth anything. I, I'm, I'm, and I'm putting in under five, there's section five. It says, I am a citizen or a national of a country other than Canada. No. If no, I will become a citizen of, there's a blank there, once I renounce my Canadian citizenship and attach proof. Uh, now, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not claiming for any uh, country. I, it says in there, so I, uh, I will become a citizen of political asylum. And I hereby declare that I wish to renounce my Canadian citizenship for the following reasons under B. And I put down to escape continued persecution, crimes against humanity, genocide, and medical experimentation in Canada. 
And I fully intend to file this once I get legal advice from a lawyer. If they do not step up and prove that this, this citizenship is worth something. I am going to be the first disabled person in, well, maybe even, well, not the first uh, Canadian. Because I think Conrad Block did that, right? Isn't that how you did it, Conrad? You renounced your citizenship? Okay, well, I'm going to be the first disabled person in Canada, and I'm looking you right in the eye when I tell you this, Mr. Prime Minister, Miss Justice Minister, and all you other ministers. I am going to resign my citizenship because it's not worth the paper it's been on. It is not a bill of sale where you can have license to do with me as you will to hide your own wrongdoing and I fully intend that if this is your last chance you will you will do something about this workplace safety slavery and interference board and labor board and you will do something about this these charges Dr. John Pope had direction over how I worked and also medical situations. So I'm informing the College of Physicians and Surgeons and the Ontario Medical Association, the Ontario Hospital Association, that I am making a complaint against Dr. John Pope for putting me in this situation, for abandoning his patient mid-treatment because he got caught. And he refused to answer my questions. We didn't even have a discussion about it. He didn't even feel he had to have a discussion about it. I've got all the medical records, too. Everything. Uh, definitely the people. Uh, so whatever, whatever attorney general was responsible at that time needs to be charged. Whatever labor minister was, was responsible at that time needs to be charged. Whoever all these people were that were responsible for those ministries, you need to find. And definitely Kim Wood LaRue, who is now the manager of business services in Kitchener, she was the customer service rep, or no, sorry, she was the uh, office worker rep, worker service rep, whatever. She was one of the reps. Whichever one of the reps were that ever went on, on anybody who investigated those, anybody who's on, listed on a form before the uh, worker safety rep was put in place needs to be charged. David Whitney, the manager at the time, needs to be charged. Sue Sefton. The nurse case manager that deliberately withheld my informed consent. And Dr. Pope withheld my informed consent. As did Toronto Western Hospital when they allowed them, or whoever's responsible for that for that, for that diagnosis over there where they said I was pre-injury status, no restrictions. Obviously, actually, from the notes, what we garnered is that the nurse case manager and, and Kim Wood LaRue were permitted to go to the hospital and dictate what the answer was going to be because they have the full report and then they have what's called an executive summary. Executive summary is them doing what they do, cutting and pasting little bits and pieces here to make it sound like something it's not. Because the reason why I was reinstated right away is because we read the report and pointed out where they were actually totally wrong. It was the opposite of what they said because they left the parts out that were important in their executive summary. But everybody's so busy, they don't read the whole report. They just read that executive summary. The problems in the healthcare system aren't mine. They became mine when you made them mine. But this thing about interfering with informed consent, not reporting patient harm, and excuse me, uh, Attorney General, Prime Minister, Health Ministers, where is the tracking of patient harm? Based on my case, where is patient safety anywhere? We are at the will of even doctors because doctors can harm anybody and there's no such thing as medical error. Community care access centers was required to give me, I was referred three times to them, Ontario CCAC, so the province of Ontario, and it, at least two of them were sufficient enough that they could use the same assessment, but they each charge for an assessment individually because they get charged 700 or 900 or whatever, $1,500 to do an assessment when it had already been done. And it said that I was supposed to get a scooter. 
But then they interfered with me to get a scooter. Now, why would they do that? Because then I wouldn't be able to get out and tell my story, right? Obstruction. Look it up. Anyway. Raise the bar. It's now crimes against humanity, and I want that. I want that wiped out. This system is gone. And anybody out there, all we got to do is write it down. I need somebody, especially illegal, if you're retired. You want to see an end to this nonsense once and for all? Help me write it down because we'll bring it before the International Criminal Court and we will bring the justice move. Well, that's your last chance right now. You better do the right thing. I'm not allowing anything other. And I'm sorry, I think I hold all the damn cards right now. You did this to yourself. I just documented it. Anyway, time for the public to know what exactly, who was contacted and when and what's been done about it. And then I'm going to put forward my case because the case, actually, I should put the case forward right now. Uh, and act, actually, I'm going to take a break real quick. But I'm going to be back to read the uh, Crimes Against Humanity and War Crimes Act in the context of what I've been talking about. And let's see if you agree. Please comment. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So um, it's called SC, I would imagine it's Supreme Court or something, 2000, Chapter 24. An act respecting genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes, and to implement the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court, and to make consequential amendments to other acts. I sent it to June 29, 2000. Her Majesty, by and with the advice and consent of the Senate and the House of Commons of Canada, enacts as follows. Short title. One, this act may be cited as the Crimes Against Humanity and War Crimes Act. Interpretation. Definitions. 2, subsection 1. The definitions in this subsection apply in this act. Conventional international law means any convention, treaty, or other international agreement, A, that is in force and to which Canada is a party, or B, that is in force and the provisions of which Canada has agreed to accept and apply in an armed conflict with which it is involved. Droit International Convention, no. International Criminal Court, so in other words, conventional international law, the one that applies is the UN Convention on Disability Rights. And other human rights acts, including the Canadian Human Rights Act, in case you were wondering, Justice Ministers. International Criminal Court means the International Criminal Court established by the Rome Statute, Cour Penal International. Official, in respect to the International Criminal Court, means the prosecutor, registrar, deputy prosecutor, and, sorry, the other half's in French, deputy registrar, and the staff of the organs of the court, functionaire. Rome Statute means the Rome Statute of International Criminal Court adopted by the United Nations Diplomatic Conference on Pleno, Plenipotentiaries on the establishment of an International Criminal Court on July 17, 1998, as corrected by the Process Verbaux of November 10, 1998, July 12, 1999, November 30, 1999, and May 8, 2000 portions of which are set out in the schedule, Statute de Rome. Words and expressions, which is number two, unless otherwise provided, words and expressions used in this act have the same meaning as in the criminal code. Her Majesty, three, or binding on Her Majesty, number three, this act is binding on Her Majesty in the right of Canada or a province. Yes, that means you, Federal Justice Minister, that means you, Provincial Justice Minister, and that means you, Queen Elizabeth. You can solve this real easy, ma'am. Why don't you give us a 90th birthday present and get rid of privilege? 
or make a rule that it's not above the law, it is held to a higher standard than the law. A little clarification might go a long way to help. I mean, are we ruled or are we self-ruled? Time for you to answer that question, eh? You can fly over, you don't need a passport, apparently. Offenses within Canada. Genocide, etc., committed in Canada. 4, subsection 1. Every person is guilty of an indictable offense who commits A, genocide, B, crime against humanity, or C, a war crime. Conspiracy, attempt, etc. 1.1. Every person who conspires or attempts to commit is an accessory after the fact in relation to or counsels in relation to an offense referred to in subsection 1 is guilty of an indictable offense. Punishment. Two, every person who commits an offense under subsection 1 or 1.1a shall be sentenced to imprisonment for life if an intentional killing forms the basis of the offense and b is liable to imprisonment for life for in any other case. I've gotten life. I think that's fair. I got a life sentence. Anybody who's been injured at work by this and, and protected where it was protected by this protection racket has a life sentence. Every taxpayer who's had to pay for the extra added costs of this criminality has had a life sentence, including some of their kids, because isn't that where our deficit is also coming from? Again, we shouldn't be asking these questions. Shh, there's nothing going on. Go back to sleep. Oh, Canada. Or we can go on. Okay, so definitions. Number three, the definitions in this subsection apply in this sub in this section. Now, this is very interesting. Crime against humanity, and this is the one. This is one of the charges I'm making against the government and those involved with this little charade, charade, subterfuge. Wow, that's a big word, subterfuge. Okay. Crimes against, or crime against humanity means murder, extermination, enslavement, deportation, imprisonment, torture, sexual violence, persecution, or any other inhumane act or omission that is committed against any civilian population or any identifiable group and that at the time and in the place of its commission constitutes a crime against humanity according to customary international law or conventional international law or by virtue of its being criminal according to the general principles of law recognized by the community of nations, whether or not it constitutes a contravention of the law in force at the time and in the place of its commission, which is also known as crime contra la humanity, la humanity, I guess. So under this heading, I would point out that I, as well as everybody else in WSIB who's been subject to this illegally operating system in bad faith, as a protection racket for the gov Ontario government, which the, it appears the Canadian government is assisting. At the very least, the Ontario government needs to be investigated for crimes against humanity and genocide in this context. That is non-negotiable. How the government of Canada chooses to deal with this now, Ms. Uh, Ray Bould and Mr. Prime Minister Trudeau and Mr. Public Safety Minister Ralph Goodall and Disability Minister Carla Qualtro, Family Minister Eve Duclos, Health Minister, I forget which one it is, but I've got it written down because you've gotten my email as well. You've all gotten my email. So what I'm saying is that based on what happens, this is enslavement. It's a slavery board. This is also human trafficking. Since when am I, you know, well, I guess it may not be human trafficking, I guess, because we haven't crossed borders, right? But it's definitely enslavement. I have had, I've been stripped of all my rights. I am nothing more than a slave. I can't even get it written down in this courthouse. Imprisonment, because I've been, I may have been outside, but this is a prison. Torture is definitely on the list. 
persecution or other inhumane act or omission. See, omission, error, omission, deliberate, does not matter. But when I'm sitting here telling you what I'm telling you and you continue, that makes it deliberate. So the Ontario government has no choice. This is deliberate for them. Committed against any civilian population or identifiable group, such as worker. The minute you are named worker, our rights go out the window. Especially when they're operating illegally. Like if they were operating the system legally as it's designed to be done, then we have no complaint, I guess, right? But it's not, is it? And David Marshall, you better get a really good pillow because you're going to jail for life, Buster, if I have my way to say about it. And, you know, that continuity in government, that's the one good thing. It's been all a liberal government since 2004. And it's all been David Marshall since 2003, right, David? You better go play some golf and tennis while you got a chance. Or maybe, maybe that's where they'll send you. Country club, eh, buddy? Hopefully, hey, maybe we should keep Guantanamo Bay open. You're definitely in line for the pillory when we bring it back. So, again, workers constitutes a crime against humanity according to customary international law. So, withholding informed consent. Uh, a fraudulent system right from the ground up. Even against the ones that are actually, actually more so... Take the workers out of the equation. What about all you employers out there? The ones that are spending the money, that are following the law, that do follow the letter of the law as best they can. This is a question that needs to be answered. When are you acting in bad faith? Because apparently the Ontario government doesn't have a clue. They don't know. That's one thing that's consistent. And whether that's provincial liberals with federal liberals, federal liberals, now's your chance to prove that you're not the same party. But then, Justin, you've been kissing up the wind so long, I guess it's hard to distinguish in the public anymore, eh? Here's your chance. Do the right thing. So, crime against humanity, I think it fits the bill. Especially as it's a continuing thing. Genocide means an act or omission committed with intent to destroy in whole or in part an identifiable group of persons such as that at the time and in the place of its commission constitutes genocide according to customary international law or conventional international law or by virtue of its being criminal according to the general principles of law recognized by the community of nations whether or not it constitutes contravention of the law in force at the time and in a place of its commission. So an act or a mission, and it's to destroy the credibility of the worker. It's to destroy the system that you claim to uphold. Because it's not the system you claim to uphold. It's a criminal system of racketeering. War crime means an act or a mission committed during an armed conflict that at the time and in the place of its commission constitutes a war crime according to customary international law or conventional international law applicable to armed conflicts whether or not it constitutes a contravention of the law in force at the time and in the place of its commission. Crime de guerre. The last one was geno genocide. Uh, interpretation, now of course war crime doesn't apply because we're not in time of war. I mean I am because they declared war on me but Technically, we're not in a time of war, so I guess that doesn't work, right? Interpretation, customary international law. Four, for greater certainty, crimes described in Article 6 and 7 and Paragraph 2 of Article 8 of the Rome Statute are, as of July 17, 1998, crimes according to customary international law. This does not limit or prejudice in any way the application of existing or developing rules of an international law. And then at the bottom of page three, I'm only continuing page three, uh, breach of responsibility by military commander doesn't really apply. 
uh, 5-1, military commander commits an identical offense if A, the military commander, and then it goes on to the next page, which I don't have. Now then, uh, for the Rome Statute, now it did say in the last one, I'm going to reread what the Rome Statute's full explanation is for crimes against humanity and genocide. But um, interpretation customary international law, it says Article 6 and 7, so that's Article 6 is genocide, Article 7 is crime against humanity, and Paragraph 2 of Article 8, so Article 2, Paragraph 2 of Article 8, which is war crimes, but that doesn't apply. Of the Rome Statute are as of July 17th, crimes according to customary international law. So they are crimes. Now this is the Rome Statute, which is the rules of the world, which we signed on and ratified not only the Rome Statute, I think we did the Rome Statute, didn't we? Um, I guess the Attorney General can answer that one. But certainly we ratified the UN Protocol on Disability Rights and this country, let alone, well, this province and the federal government so far has shown that there's no indication of proper uh, implementation, especially at, the, at my level, because after all these years, why are we having a problem other than because of the merits, as I claim? So, uh, Schedule, subsection 2, uh, parentheses 1. Provisions of the Rome Statute, Article 6, Genocide. So, for the purpose of this statute, genocide means any of the following acts committed with the intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethical, ethnical, racial, or religious group such as killing members of the group, or A, sorry, A is killing members of the group. B, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group. C, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. D, imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group. E, forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. So under that, as clarification, article I am claiming Canada, or Ontario, government of Ontario so far, possibly the government of Canada, is to be investigated under Article 6 for genocide Article 6, B, and C. Article 6, again, for the purpose of this statute, genocide means any of the following acts committed with intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnical, racial, or religious group such as, and I claim that's worker. The group is worker. And also disabled, because I happen to be disabled. And because you're not in line with, uh, obviously, this is a this is a litmus paper. This is a test. This is this is a demonstrate. You are allowed to demonstrate exactly what the reality is of accessibility over the last year, and I feel you have done a really good job of it, because I couldn't have asked for better myself than the way that you. And again, this shows systemic pattern across every tribunal, and now. The judicial system. I will be bringing out my next tape. I'm going to break them up this time because the, the other tape I'm posting today will be on showing you exactly who I contacted and tried to get to deal with this and when. And again, you need to ask serious questions. But I, I believe uh, you should join me if you think that this crosses a line. I'd like to have comment. So again, uh, Article 6. B is causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group. And C, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. Because with the way that it is uh, being played out, well, hey guys, anybody been injured by the Workplace Slavery and Interference Board since 2004? Especially, hey, anybody work for uh, Liberty Staffing in Kitchener? Anybody work for uh, Kitchener Pallet Services, either directly or through Liberty Staffing Services in Kitchener? Anybody work for Borden Cold Storage in Kitchener or uh, Liberty Staffing 
Are Borden Cold Storage through Liberty Staffing in Kitchener? Borden Cold Storage and Kitchener Pallet Services were located at the old Hoffman plant in Kitchener on the corner of Arnold and Maple Streets in Kitchener. So even if you worked there for a day, anybody suffered an accident there? Anybody have a WSIB situation there? Uh, you know, you might want to look into this. And hey, leave a, leave a note. Contact me. Let's do a class action. All you employers out there that have been doing the right thing, that have been gotten conned by this government and this protection racket, you have legal recourse too. Article 7, Crimes Against Humanity. Again, this is from Provisions of the Rome Statute. Number 1. And this says it's current to May 24th, 2016. So this is current right now. Article 7, Crimes Against Humanity. Section 1. For the purpose of this statute, crime against humanity means any of the following acts when committed as part of widespread or systemic attack directed against any civilian population with the knowledge of the attack. So... It's widespread and systemic because it's across. I can't get anybody to take evidence anywhere. It's shut down and shut out. I can't even get UN to take evidence right now because they don't write it down. There's a little, and, and again, I don't know if you know this. Take the opportunity to call Ontario Human Rights or Canadian Human Rights. And you will find, and pretend to be a person with a disability who has to record and see what their answer is. Because the policy is you're not allowed to record. And I'm going, excuse me, but it's to participate in my own life. And they go, doesn't matter. The only way we're allowed to do that is you give me your information and I'll have a manager call you in about two weeks to let you know whether or not you can record. And that's Canadian human rights and Ontario human rights. They have human rights legal support center. I've got that whole experience on tape of how they run you around and play with you and run interference because that's what they're here to do. It's clear. And I'll let you know what's happening because there's something. Uh, well, maybe now's the time to say it. Guess what? I was right. Not only am I not going in with a lawyer, but the Crown Attorney got to choose what is evidence, and they decided I don't get a jury by my 12 of my peers. Because if I had 12 ordinary citizens sitting in that box and told them even half of what I'm saying, or even proved any of what I'm saying, there's no way. But hey, the fix is in, just like I predicted. You know, really interesting, eh? Cookie cutter world, administrative. So again, is that systemic? Is that widespread? I mean, gee, it went from uh, common law to criminal code. You're talking labor board, health, legal, attorney general. I went to everybody, ombudsman, everybody, legal aid. Mostly legal aid. Gee, I guess a couple of you guys are going down too, eh? Anyway, the whole point of this is fix the damn thing. Don't let this happen to anybody ever again. Ever. At least, or at least get better at, at fucking it up so you don't get caught, you dickheads. No. It's abide by the law. You have a duty under oath or duty under law. If you can't do it, get the fuck out. Excuse the French, sorry about that. So systemic attack directed against any civilian population. Well, I happen to be civilian population. It's called disabled, as are the rest of the disabled and also worker. So, so it's a crime against humanity with uh, so, for the purpose of this statute, crime against humanity means any of the following acts when committed as part of a widespread or systemic attack directed against any civilian population with knowledge of the attack. A. Murder. B. Extermination. C. Enslavement. Gee, what do you call it when a worker uh, can be hurt and everything else and uh, not get any health care and, and uh, get shut down like I did? Was that not enslavement? 
Is it not enslavement to force them to keep going back to work with these in, uh, improperly work, uh, operating employers? And bad health care? Because it's not health care, it's health insurance now. We need patient-centered care. We used to have it, but I guess that went with free trade, eh? When the insurance companies got to do it, insurance and banking. Hey, Mr. Kretchen, you're the one who married those two together, remember? Government works against us. Government is here to pull the wool over your eyes. Government only works in democracy if you're involved. So stop pretending, will you? Open your eyes. So enslavement is C. D, deportation of, or forcible transfer of population. E, imprisonment or other severe deprivation of physical liberty in violation of fundamental rules of international law, such as you disabled me. You provided the means and the ability for that employer to operate illegally. You are responsible for the accident. You're mostly responsible for what came afterwards with trying to shut me down. Because I have legitimate grievances, which you don't want to hear because, hey, if you put that in the court of law, then, gee, you can change something, I guess, eh? But we both know it's not getting into a court of law, right? You guys won't let that happen. Not in Canada. Oh, Canada. Anyway, so that's definitely uh, Crimes Against Humanity 1E applies. 1F applies, which is torture. Psychological, emotional, and spiritual, and physical. G, rape, sexual slavery, and forced prostitution, forced pregnancy, and forced sterilization, or any other form of sexual violence or of comparable gravity. H, persecution against any identifiable group or collectivity on political, racial, national, ethnic, cultural, religious, gender, as defined in paragraph 3, or other grounds that are universally recognized as impermissible under international law in connection with any act referred to in this paragraph or any crime within the jurisdiction of the court. So again, persecution. I've been persecuted, and I'm still being persecuted. Stop it. Cease and desist immediately. I, enforced disappearance of persons. J, the crime of apartheid. And K, other inhumane acts of a similar character intentionally causing great suffering or serious injury to body or to mental or physical health. So that applies to K. So again, recap, genocide is Article 6, C, or sorry, B and C, and Article 7 is uh, number 1, C, E, F, H, and K. That's my charge against the government of Ontario and Canada. So just uh, for the purpose of paragraph one, A, attack directed against any civilian population means a course of conduct involving the multiple commission of acts referred to in paragraph one against any civilian population pursuant to or in furtherance of a state or organizational policy to commit such attack, such as WSIB. How many people have you hurt? Uh, please come forward. And multiple commissions of acts against my person. I'm civilian. I'm a civilian population too. It's called disabled. Hey, how about the fact that we are being shut down and shut out, denied, deflect, and obstruct? That also falls under that. B, extermination includes the intentional infliction of conditions of life inter alia, which means as it is, the deprivation of access to food and medicine calculated to bring about the destruction of part of a population. Now, I said C, enslavement, means the exercise of any or all of the powers attaching to the right of ownership over a person and includes the exercise of such power in the course of trafficking in persons, in particular men or women and children. So, uh, exercise of all any or all of the powers attaching to the right of ownership. So I haven't been able to get health care. 
I haven't been able to get, uh, you know, my rights, and you've been directing that. That's enslavement. That's my charge. You have made me into a slave because I can't. And and what are you trying to make the point of this court right now? The point is I can't do anything. You're in control. That's the me that's the message there. We are in control, and just do what you're required to do, not what you're supposed to do, not what we're supposed to do. Uh, I'm just going to read the ones that I think apply. So again, it's uh, B, C, or A, C, E, which is torture means the intentional infliction of severe pain or suffering, whether physical or mental, upon a person in the custody or under the control of the accused. Workplace Slavery Insurance Board. Health care, which is directed by Workplace Slavery and Insurance Board. Labor Board. So there you go. Except that torture shall not include pain or suffering arising only from inherent in or incidental to lawful sanctions. So you're not, this is not lawful. So I guess you're done on that. Persecution, G, means the intentional and severe deprivation of fundamental rights contrary to international law by reason of the identity of the group or collectivity, or collectively, collectivity, sorry. Disabled again me again uh, severe deprivation of fundamental rights like the right to be fucking heard to have it written down and that's it Oh, there is something here that, uh, again, interesting. Uh, yeah, I got to read number three. For the purpose of this statute, it is understood that the term gender refers to the two sexes, male and female, within the context of society. The term gender does not indicate any meaning different from the above. So isn't that a violation of international human rights? For uh, transgender, bi, and lesbian, whatever, LB... LGBT, did I get it right that time? I don't know. Right in in this document, the Rome statute. So again, is that eye opening? Should you review that against persecution against trans people? Anyway, a lot of questions. Um, I believe it raises the bar. And this is a legal notification to the government of Canada. And to the Attorney Generals of, and Justice Minister of Canada, to the Attorney General of Ontario and to the Premier of Ontario and Health Ministers of and, and Prime Minister Trudeau, you know, we can still get in that boxing ring and raise money if you, if you dare. Anyway, uh, I think you demonstrated clearly, uh, hey, transparency, it's transparent what the new government is. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. That's because we need a new system. One person, one vote. Let's take our democracy back using their rules of democracy. Independent Canadian Citizens Party or whatever, it has to be grassroots. Let's all get together, decide what we want when, when we get our majority in, you know, and uh, there you go. Start supporting grassroots party, not these other parties, because you want the system to change, first past the post isn't going to be the only thing to do it. First past the post with the same system. Okay, yeah, that's going to change everything, right? That's what they have you believe. It's not the truth. There's only one way to change this system. It's been in place for 2,000 years, and it's called a system of privilege. You got people shouting treason right from the floor of the houses of representatives declaring how they're working for companies that pay them or or gee you know they're just their constituents right but anyway uh everybody knows what's going on it's time you know armageddon maybe it means that it's time that we end this world as we know it because we can do that all around the world Ind independent citizens parties in each country 
clearly defined goals as to what's going to happen, and, and let's work together internationally. You know, you don't, oh, green, because we should separate it into one more thing. No, it's the whole picture. And the whole picture reads that all four of these parties have something to lose. And again, what, what demonstrated in Ontario especially, because I brought this to every single party. That's in the next tape, though. So I hope you follow it. Uh, hour and 40, and it's a little bit better than before. I'm trying to keep these down. It's hard to do with my disability, though, because I forget where the hell I am. Uh, i got to review this and hope I covered everything. Anyway, um, I will be doing the next tape. It will be the one showing exactly what evidence as far as what I've been trying to do, as far as just getting accommodation and trying to be heard. Trying to get any of our n many representatives who have anything to do about this to try and comment on anything. Mr. Trudeau, you've already demonstrated what your take is. And, and again, Bell Globe Telemedia, you need to explain to everybody. And CRTC, this is an oral uh, presentation, that uh, there's something funny going on here. Okay, you know, it's really interesting, CRTC, you got none of these information stations are reporting, they're not investigating, right, anyway, lots can be done, this is Chris Bacon, disabled guy, brain injured guy, sorry, brain, well, I'm disabled too, but the brain injured guy, and I'm signing off for now, so hopefully this finds everybody well, and keep up the good fight. And join mine, will you? Or join our fight, I should say. It's our fight. It's not mine. I just have the means to end it once and for all. So join with me. Help me write it down. Please, because they definitely don't want to. Which should tell you a lot. Does it say I have something to fear when they are going to this extent to make sure that I don't get one single syllable written down in any venue? Because it's all the same. I can press play. I own all the copyrights, and you guys can't deny what is captured in a moment in time. Well, you could try. I'd like to see you. That'd be fun. Not too smart, but it'd be fun. Okay, anyway, hopefully this finds you well. Have a good day, and I'll talk to you soon.